What up, beautiful people? This is Nadir. This is Kev. Two thirds of the super group that is Games Music Life. And we're back with a review for this new J. Cole album. For your own eyes only. For your eyes only. Yeah. Interesting how he spelled eyes, too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a little nod to the to the legend. Yeah, I you think I think that definitely has something to do with it. But yeah. eh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? All right. So get into it, man. We um this is Cole's fourth album. He recorded out of two studios, North Carolina uh, studio called The Shelter. Shelter. And uh and, and in New York City as well. Um he recorded the whole album over the summer of two thousand sixteen. So he recorded it all wow. this year. Um, which was pretty dope to me. Um also, um two songs leading up to it, False Prophets and uh, everybody dies. everybody dies did not make the album strange but you know what they didn't fit the narrative no so they didn't it didn't it's okay it, did, it didn't fit the narrative but just selfish reasons i kind of wanted them to be there I, I wanted the album to fit that theme gave it some bonus tracks maybe yeah maybe give it the bonus but i thought it was going to stay in the pocket of that um false prophets where it sounded like 90s aren't uh, 90s hip-hop yeah and i thought he was going to stay into that but uh that was my own selfish reasons but definitely man we'll get into the album and review that but also he did have a 40-minute documentary on titles called Eyes. Yep. And um, so the buzz was ready for this album. And people love Cole. His last album with Platinum with zero features on it. Listen, um, he's got a dedicated fan base. He does have, a, he does sure. have a dedicated fan base. So but, I'm sure that there are a lot of Cole watchers right now. Man, yeah. listen, before we get started, 100% greatest album ever. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Drink more water. <laughs> Peace. All well, right. you, if you want to hear a review, yeah, stick around. Stick around. All right. So let's get into it, man. First track on the album. For whom the bell tolls. Yes. What do you think? Uh, man, I really thought it was a good way to kick off the album, man. It had an unorthodox, jazzy beat uh, with some drown-out horns that were really coming through to the front, mm -hmm. which I thought was a nice touch. Uh, Cole was setting the tone with the track, speaking on feelings of an uncertainty and despair, depression, anger, anxiety, just all kinds of things. Uh, really getting you in the mood for where this album was going. Okay. I mean, uh, Tamir, you're, I definitely, I, I thought the beat was very dope. Uh, the singing, you know, on the track... It was okay. I thought it would set the tone for the album, what the album was going to be about. Cole likes to sing. He likes to croon a little bit. I can't really say singing. So it's kind of like crooning a little bit. But it was a very short track, kind of like just, you know, just an intro into the album. Right. And I thought it was okay. I thought it was decent. Decent track. Yeah. Okay. Uh, track two, Immortal. Yes. Um, this beat sinks in. The first verse explains, you know, the angles of a dope dealer. He spits from a dope boy's point of view. Um, from the fast money to the effect he has on, on the conscience on what you see, on some of the things you see as a dope dealer. Um, he paints a pretty you know vivid picture in that first verse. Uh, second verse, it kind of switched up. They seem to speak from another point of view, from an angle of a different person. The flow is a bit different, and the second verse you know as well on that one. So it's kind of like it was two different people he yeah. was rapping as on that on this song. Yeah, uh, with it, uh, I definitely like this track as well, man. I felt like it had a hazy, kind of somber vibe uh, as far as the production goes. It had some really clean percussion on there, which I thought was dope. And uh, just like you said, man, uh, it felt like it was a tale of two stories almost. Mm -hmm. um, you know, first verse, he was talking about his trapper aspirations and, uh, you know, wanting to rise to be the kingpin and, uh, you know, kind of be the big dog in the game. Mm -hmm. And then that second verse, uh, you know, realizing that even if he were to do that, uh, he would only grow to resent it because of, you know, the existence that uh, that it would lead to, uh, typically leading to early death or, you know, incarceration, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of just trying to break out of that mentality that would have held him back or, you know, kept him from realizing his true potential if he were to, you know, kind of pursue that lane. So I, I thought that that was real cool how he kind of gave you uh, the glitz and the glamour and then the raw and the gritty. Right, right. So, different, so definitely both angles of it. I, yeah. I thought it was a dope track. Okay. Um, so moving right along. <clears throat> track three, Deja Vu. Yeah. What'd you think? Uh, again, man, 90s vibe on this track uh, <clears throat> with the sample from Swing My Way playing in the background. Uh, you know, I, I guess that was one that we had also heard earlier this year from uh, Bryson Tiller as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Cole was spitting a story about meeting a woman that he really wanted, uh, even though she was already in a relationship or already got a man. Mm -hmm. uh, he was imagining how much better, you know, her life could be if he was in it. Mm -hmm. um, thought it was real dope, man. Had a real heavy Tupac influence, man, uh, to the point I almost thought it was Pac on the hook. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure who that was on the hook or if maybe Cole's kind of playing with his vocals because I can actually still hear Cole on that hook, but, you know, it definitely had the energy of Pac. Um, and listening to his flow, his flow reminded me a lot of Pac, too, which uh, I felt like was a little bit of a theme that carried on throughout the album. But, again, really liked the track. Okay. I mean, I, I thought the same thing. It had a little bit of a controversy as far as the beat. The beat was actually, um, it was not a Bryson, uh, Bryson Tiller sample. Mm -hmm. It actually, from what the producer says, according to the, the, um, the notes on the album, 
this track was actually done before Bryson Tiller's track. Wow. So the beat was actually, they were fighting over it, and they, they accused the guy who gave the beat to Bryson Tiller of stealing it. So it wasn't, because I first thought it was a Bryson Tiller sample, but it wasn't. Um, but like you said, definitely a dope beat. You know, the the, um, the cadence as far as the repetitive, the way the song went, I mean, the, the, the beat went, was very dope to me. Um, you know, he's shooting a shot, basically, yeah. to, a, to a girl. And like you said, she had a man, but he was basically just telling her, like, hey, man, your life would be much better with me. You know what? Um, I felt like on that second verse, he was actually just thinking it. Like, yeah. he, he didn't actually go to her and say any of that stuff. He was just kind of thinking what he wanted. I think that, too, because it goes into, like, the, the DJ coming on and saying, like, hurry up. You know, yeah, the club shoot, the shot. <laughs> shoot, shoot the shot. Shoot the shot. Get your last ditch efforts in. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a solid track to me. I, I, I definitely like that one. Yeah. All right. So, number four, Ville Mentality. Yeah. Um, this is a throwback beat. It definitely had a throwback vibe. Cole, Cole sings for most of the track. In my opinion, explains why he has been as missing as he has been. We haven't seen J. Cole. I looked at his Instagram. The last picture he posted was December of 2015. Yeah. You know, he just hasn't he hasn't been on social media. He kind of, in my opinion, is kind of talking from his angle, from J. Cole's angle, and talking about why he was missing like he has been. Um, and one of the bars he's saying, you know, I'm not missing, but I'm, I'm, I'm not running, I'm escaping. And that was kind of telling to me as well. The song leads into a little girl talking about her father and how he died. And then it leads into a couple bars. The bars sound like pride driven, almost like it was the dad that died talking about something that happened and might would have led to his death. You know, the, one of the chorus that, that stood out to me was like, how long can I go with this mentality? Yeah. Like he was just like, like I said, it was almost like the dad that the little girl was talking about had died and he was kind of explaining his perspective on what happened like i'm gonna be real i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and it sounded like he was like i couldn't tell who he was arguing with or it's like a battle between two things and i couldn't really understand it but nonetheless i think later on in the album it kind of explains a little bit more um and then it ends with a little girl talking again you know just basically just the anger of a kid who had a parent who died or just or, or not around and uh she talked about her anger and when she just wished her dad was there it led to a couple bars from the dad's point of view at the end, too. But I think it was definitely a dope track. But I kind of would love to hear J. Cole's perspective on what this song was about. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, for me, I actually got a little bit of a different take from it. But, okay. you know, hearing you say that, I, I, can def I definitely had that thought, too, at first. And okay. then uh, listening to the track a little bit, uh, I went a little bit left on uh, my original thoughts on it. But okay. it, I thought it was a very smooth, jazzy track. Had some excellent, really just standout-ish keys, uh, which I thought were great on there. Uh, the whole album had a real jazz vibe to it, but this mm -hmm. one really kind of cemented the sound for me. Uh, I felt like Cole was spitting about how hard it was to navigate through his life now and mm -hmm. success. Okay. And, uh, you know, still flirting with the idea of leaving the rap game. Remember, Cole said a while back yeah. that he was planning to retire. Yeah. And uh, listening to that first verse really had me feeling like, you know, he's talking about... Uh, uh, you know, now people only call me when they need something or, yeah. you know what I'm saying, girls just coming around because I'm a star or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was also kind of struggling to break free of that Ville mentality, you know, in this rap game where his pride is just ego driven, right. and everything right. like that. And uh, just trying to, you know, his his heart is not to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. even though listening to most of his music, that's where he shines is yeah. in his vulnerability and his truth. So um, I definitely think that. Uh, I, I kind of got that vibe from it, but in first listen, I did think that uh, that second verse was definitely more so spoken from maybe the uh, another perspective. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, again, kind of speaking on that pride that it won't uh, let him break free from, and uh, maybe might lead to his demise, and uh, kind of keeping that in mind. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good vision there, man. Um, track five, she's mine, part one. Uh, what do you think? Oh, uh, man, it was a slow track with a smooth string and key arrangement. Uh, Cole was flexing uh, his rough singing voice. You mm -hmm. know, for some reason, like, dude, he can't sing well, but it works. <laughs> it <does. laughs> you know what I'm saying? It works. It, it was perfect for that song. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know what I'm saying? Uh, talking about showing a bit of vulnerability for his character, you know, describing falling in love with a woman for the first time. I'm imagining it's probably the girl from the club that yeah. he really wanted. Now he's yeah. finally got her. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he feels like he's falling in love with her. And, um you know, something just different for him. So I thought it was a cool track. Set okay. the tone. Okay, no doubt. Um, like you said, falling in love. That's why I had key down as far as the track. Um, explains he is uh, falling for the girl, paints a good picture of how he is falling. You know, one of the lines that stuck out to me, he says, why I'm too scared to expose myself. Turns out you know me better than I know myself. Which a lot of times, anybody's been in love, that's pretty much how it works, man. Yeah. You know, you're, you're kind of explaining, you know, you're probably nervous about the vulnerability you're putting out. But when the person that you're with is a person that pretty much knows you better than you, 
that's kind of when you know that you know it's a rat for you. You're in there, you know. Um, his pen shines on this one, in my opinion. As as usual, he he does at times. He didn't get into some of the old repetitive cold nature before. We got got personal, which I love, but also just got a little too dreary sometimes. Um, the hook fixed the song. Um, works. He he definitely works it in this point as far as the singing, like you said, definitely uses it. The violin on this song pulls me in, you know, and makes me just fall in love with the track. Yeah, yeah. It kind of did, and it, I think that was his view in doing that violin because at some points it gets kind of quiet and you just hear the violin by itself. And I found myself like closing my eyes, like, okay, he pulled me in. Very sexy track. Very sexy track. Okay. All right. Um. All right. So next one, change. Yeah. All right. Um. This one was pure bars. Um, I love the pocket that Cole was in on this one, man. Um, the track speaks, you know, speaks about evolution and artist perspective, questioning the right, you know, the right way of living. On this one, I, now I say artist, and that's one thing I keep theme on this album. I keep saying artist because I don't think this is Cole speaking from his perspective on this one. Yeah. Um, so you know, definitely kind of talks about the ups and downs, and you know, and then it, 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 what, this song was so the the greatness of this song was how it drifted. It started off very upbeat, very just. Like okay, I'm shoot, I'm, I'm I'm in my pocket, I'm doing my thing, and then it just like drifts to a very slow, sad, <laughs> somber eulogy of a, a pastor doing a eulogy, and it you know just and, and it, to a, a guy talking in the background about you know basically just upset about the death of whoever it was, yeah, and how he's gonna find out and you know, but um that's that's what that's the thing that stood out to me about the track how like I said it was just upbeat and it just drifted to very somber. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it did it did the uh, the tone of the song did change there. Uh, I felt like this uh, this track kicked off with an upbeat, jazzy track. Uh, had a simple kick and a groovy bass line with some gentle keys to complement. Uh, again, Cole kind of spitting about the struggle, uh, both lived and within. Um, you know what I'm saying? Trying to come up in the street, trying to navigate, but also the internal conflict of, you know, trying to fit in mm-hmm. where he's living at and also, you know, trying to find a better way in the world for himself and uh, how he was kind of conflicted in that uh, and trying to grow and better life, better his life and uh, find an understanding of the world around him. So mm-hmm. definitely thought it was dope. The one thing I will say about this track, uh, you know, when it gets to the, the point where he's talking about, you know, the person who passed, uh, man, the fake crying in the back, it was yeah. a little, it was a little <laughs> jarring. I'm like, oh man, you know, I don't yeah. know, but you know, uh, there's no knock, but it was just something that did kind of stand out to me. He's just like, Oh, because yeah. it was him. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. just like, oh man, he could have made it a little more authentic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, I, and up until this point, that's kind of my my thing on the album a little bit was like, and I told you this when I was we were texting, is like delegation. Like I just want him to delegate some roles to some people. <laughs> yeah. You know, even if you just pay for someone to come in and cry, just do that instead of it being or just leave it off. Yeah, just, or leave it off. Leave right. it off because it sounded like he was almost laughing. Exactly. But, like he was he was forcing it. Yeah. You know, and I just I don't know, but he did make it work. He made it work. You know, he made it work, so I'll, I'll accept it on that. Yeah. Okay. Neighbors, man. What'd you think? Uh, man, that's my favorite song on the album. Yeah, I knew it would be. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, booming, clean bass with a simple drum pattern. Uh, come, uh, Cole comes off. He had a kind of a sped up, bouncy flow. I felt like this was the most energy he really had on the, uh, on the album as far as just straight out spitting and rapping. Uh, he was talking about, you know, trying to, again, try to move on to a better life and the new challenges that he would even face in uh, progressing past what may have been an impoverished neighborhood, finally coming up, finding success, only to be met with, you know, prejudice and racism and, you know, mm. people still thinking the worst about him, even though he's trying to improve his life. Right. And, you know, kind of even feeling like, you know, was it even worth it mm-hmm. uh, trying to better myself or, or progress if you're still going to box me in or cage me into the same space. Right. So I thought that that was really dope that he touched on that because, uh, I mean, that, that's real. You know that is I mean? real. Very and real. That was, that was something about this whole album, man. He kept it real through mm-hmm. and through. So I, I definitely respected that favorite okay. song on the album. I got you. I knew you would love that one. The thing about it is, too, is like, you know, like you said, it's so real. That's something you and I both deal with. Yeah. You know, we're out of the suburbs. Man. <laughs> People look around like, how's he here? You yeah. know, so, you know, so it's it, it just happens. Um, but yeah, man, it, this album was actually, I mean, this song, I should say, was actually about the shelter. He actually mentions that on the on the um, on the song that uh, the neighborhood that he's talking about is where the shelter's at in North Carolina. Word. So um, so it's a recording studio. I like we spoke about in the beginning of the review. Um, so he's it's in a great neighborhood. You know, Cole and his friends are just living life. Speaks on how he's living in the house from um, you know how he worked so hard to get this big nice house. He got some friends just out in the front yard having fun. You know, smoking on a cigar. 
and uh, just living life and how his neighbors are looking at it, like, how is this guy being here? He must sell drugs. Right. That must be a drug dealer. He goes into even, uh, even paints an even more vivid picture, talking about how the president is bumping his music and loves him and biting him to the White House. <laughs> and yet and still, he's still in the glass. Yeah. You know, and that's honestly, that's that's kind of the plight of being a black man. You know, no matter how <laughs> much you succeed or how much how successful you are, everyone's not going to know you. So they're going to like, this guy must be a drug dealer. Why is he here? Because he's amongst us. And yeah. I know how much this house costs. So um, I thought it was a very dope track. Very dope track. All right. Um, track eight, Folding Clothes. Um, I think at this point, the artist, and I'm going to say artist again, is talking about how he just wants his girl back. I don't know what he did to mess up, but he talked about what he wants to do with her, you know, do for her. Folding clothes being the analogy of I want to take care of you. Yeah. Um, the produc- production was very dope on this track. Um, you know, like I said, talking to his girl, how he wanted to take care of her. Track had me tapping my foot, man. Um, at this point in the album, I question if the album was telling a story and previous songs were in order, like it was a story being told. And that's where I kind of like paused it and kind of sat back and went back to the beginning of the album and played it up to this point again. And then I didn't come to a, a consensus on if it was a story being told. But nonetheless, man, it was just him pleading to the girl the things he wanted to do for her. Um, and then he goes into where he says the simple things. Yeah. You know, and that, that was pretty dope, really telling of what the relationship is like, you know, basically. The simple things is what will get you by. Nine times out of ten. Absolutely. Um, and then also, let's see, the track ends. It leaves me a little puzzled on the story theory, you know, about it. So I, I kind of like, once again, was just a little bit torn on if it was from a story perspective or what it was about. But nonetheless, dope track. Yeah. Uh, with it, I mirror your sentiments in a lot of ways there. I definitely love this track. Had a staticky guitar lead and an upbeat tempo. Uh, Cole spitting about trying to make a relationship work and uh, just trying to do the little things to show how much he appreciates the girl that he's with. Um, what I really liked about this track is how he captured how something so simple, you know what I'm saying, in a relationship can have such a deep meaning or, you know, such a deep thought behind it. I mean, just as simple as folding the clothes because, mm-hmm. you know, you've seen how hard she was working today. Yeah. You just wanted to make life a little bit easier for, you know, trying to trying to build that partnership. And right. I thought that, that he it was dope. Like, you don't see that too much uh, in rap music, especially, mm-hmm. to take such a simple topic, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and expand on how deep it really can be and, uh, you know, just how much those type of sentiments could actually mean. Um and you know how deep your love or commitment could be yeah. uh again end of the song flips the story again which mm-hmm. uh i felt like was appropriate since we were leading up towards the end of the track or end of the uh, album i should say but mm-hmm. uh definitely a really dope track definitely yeah. i knew it was i knew it was deep when uh i saw cliff Bozinski, who used to be the guy who was with uh gears of war uh-huh. he's actually with boss key now he has spun off has his own company and he tweeted um hey his girl his wife's name I want to fold your clothes. And he, he put <laughs> at J. Cole too. So he was actually listening to the album as well. And it like another married man or a per, you know, it, you don't have to be married, but another person in a deep relationship yeah. who gets it. Like you said, that's the, the little things that will get you by in relationships. And that was, it was a telling track to me. It was actually kind of weird for yeah. me too, because I had actually just done that the day before, man. Really? Uh, yeah, got off work, you know what I'm saying? Got in, my wife had been doing laundry, uh-huh. uh, you know, since she had been off, she was actually sleeping on the couch, just trying to wait for me, man. I, I walk in, I'm, I'm coming to take my shoes off, go to the bedroom. Uh-huh. And I see clothes just piled up on the bed. So, yeah. you know, I went in there, folded up all the clothes, put everything away, mm-hmm. woke her up and yeah. let her know, you know, hey, it's cool. We can go to bed now. Whatever. Cool. Right. So hearing that, it's like, oh, man, you yeah. know, you don't even think about it yeah. when you do it. But it's like, yo, yeah, it, it is those things. It's little things, man. It's, Absolutely. It'll get you by. Definitely. Relatable. No Rel- doubt. Right. Definitely relatable. <laughs> all right. So she's mine. Part two. I, listen, I got to say it, man. Like this almost brings the thug dove, man. And I'm going to tell you why. So this one, Mary, she's um, she's mine. Part one. Same beat. Except for it's a baby playing in the background. So instead of him falling in love with, you know, a girl, he's falling in love with his daughter. Yeah. And the artist, I'm going to speak, I don't know if this is Cole speaking or it might be Cole speaking, you know, points out as far as his love for his daughter and how, you know, he, he questioned whether there was a God, but he knows there's a God because of her. Yeah. And it brought, and it, would, it evoked emotion into me because it just brought me back to my firstborn. And I remember being 21 thinking and just looking at her like i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know if i got all the answers or <laughs> what i'm you know how it's gonna be for me but i know that i love this girl yeah. you know and I, it made me question whether i was ever in love before yeah. you know I, and i gonna say i questioned it i knew i was not i knew that i was in love with my daughter i wasn't in love i thank my you know my ex you know for having my daughter but i was in love with my daughter yeah and that, that's where it got me and like cole he it's almost as if he was talking to his unborn child because at this point the baby wasn't born and um 
like I said, just invoke that emotion. I, that was it was a deep track to me. Yeah, very deep. Yeah, with it, I definitely thought it was dope how it returned to the beat from part one. Mm -hmm. uh, it had a little bit of a, a change up there. It, it was a little bit of a higher key, but uh, still the same track from part one. And uh, we really got to hear the story of a different kind of first love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was he was spitting it, and he was having his first love on the first part one but now it's like oh no i'm, I'm really in love this yes. time you know what i'm saying it was just yeah. something completely different uh different kind of love different kind of vulnerability uh cole was rapping about you know his daughter and the feelings he has about being a new parent the lessons that'll teach her uh mm -hmm. the lessons that he'll learn himself and uh just trying to raise her protect her you know love her nurture her, all that kind of stuff so i definitely thought that that was dope that he, he really captured the essence did you think halfway through the track he went from talking to the baby to talking to himself I do. Okay. I do. Yeah. That's, I thought that too. Like towards the, towards the end of it, he was talking to himself. Yeah. Like you know, just things I got to do, and you know, like I said, questioning whether or not there was a God. Like I know there's a God because this is amazing. Yeah. You know. So okay. So I, I, I'm glad you you thought that as well. Um. All right. Track ten for your eyes only. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, with it, man, I thought it had a really gritty but uh, still jazzy beat. Uh, longest song on the album. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called, you know, really gets to tell the actual story of the album now. With it, uh, this is kind of when the cat comes out of the bag that, you know, he's telling the story of a mm -hmm. friend. Yeah. And uh, that this this album uh, and, you know, all the tracks kind of uh, leading up to this song were for his friend's daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, kind of telling her the story about how he lived since I'm, I'm guessing that he was probably the one that passed and you know uh was that uh, changes mm -hmm. and uh or change and so he's just basically letting her know that you know even though i'm not here you know i love you uh, i was thinking about you i tried my hardest for you you know i did everything that i could and uh, don't think that I, I left you here alone you know on on purpose mm -hmm. or that this is what i wanted um it the recording stands out of an account of his life um and in the second verse, I thought it was really cool because then Cole takes it back to himself, and yep. it sounds like either he's speaking to his friend's daughter or he's speaking to his own daughter, mm -hmm. and you know, basically just explaining to her like, "Hey, listen, this is why things are the way that they were." Mm -hmm. Again, you know, mirroring his friend's sentiment that, "Hey, listen, I, I want you to know, regardless of whatever happened, he was an amazing dude and he loved you, mm -hmm. and uh, that was what made him amazing." Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. With it, I, I thought that it was a great way to uh, to cap off the album, and it, it really wrapped up. What uh, what the whole theme or what he was talking about this whole time on the album was, and yeah. it catches you off guard because listening to the other songs, he drops little subtle hints here mm -hmm. and there, mm -hmm. but it's not you know outright and obvious. It doesn't just throw it in your face. So I, I definitely thought that that was dope, and also kind of how Cole is comparing how his life ended up and how his friend's life ended up, even right. though you know they they came or started from the same place, knowing each other as children, growing up, going through the same things, but how you know Cole's life projected him towards success mm -hmm. and you know fame and, and having the things that he wants but you know his friend got caught up in the streets and you know ultimately died lost his life so yeah i, I definitely thought that that was a, a cool uh, i don't want to say cool but that was a uh, an interesting comparison to uh, to draw on that track as well yeah definitely sound like a, like the end of a movie like the end of a yeah. suspenseful movie where you find out what had happened um throughout the movie this just like you said it definitely was from the I kept saying artists. This this was it made it vivid that it was from the perspective of that friend, yeah, um, who he was talking about. Um, good beat, definitely um, good track. You could tell this was one of the most personable songs on the album. It was kind of like a build up to this song. Yeah, like this was the end. And like you said, it's the longest track on the album. I think it's like eight and a half minutes. Yep. Um, so, you know, the track was for the artist's daughter. So whatever friend he was talking about, it was for that daughter. Um, speaking to her, you know, after his death or being locked up, I couldn't min I couldn't decide if he was dead. Or he was locked up because he mentioned something about being locked up towards the uh, second verse, um, the third verse. I'm sorry, from the dad's perspective again. He basically was hipping her to game, explains the story and why he's no longer there for her. The track transitions in the uh, perspective of Cole reading the dad's message to the daughter and how you know the dad was explaining to Cole how he saw his death coming, yeah. um, how he wanted to tell you know his story to his daughter and make sure that basically you keep his name in his daughter's life. Yeah, you know, explain that to her, and that's what Cole was doing. He was explaining that to her on that verse. Um, I felt this was dope, and um, early when I couldn't understand the angle, you know, it all made sense. Like you said, it brought everything and tied into a nice, neat bow. This album was from the friend's perspective, and I think it was riddled, It was kind of sprinkled in some of Cole's perspective as well, and I noticed that whenever he would talk from the friend's perspective, it was a different cadence in his voice. Yeah. So that's what made me go back, and thank God it's a short album. I went back once I was done and went back and listened to it again. Kind of like if you ever seen the movie The Sixth Sense. How you watch it all the way to the end, it's got a, a heck of a twist, and it makes you go back to the beginning of the movie and start watching it again. That's what this <laughs> album did for me. Yeah. You know, so I went back and checked it out. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely thought that was a very dope and dope concept of it. But um, 
all in all, man, what you got? All right. Uh, you know, kind of wrap up this out, man. Uh, now, you know, me, I've, I've been critical of J. Cole mm-hmm. over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not that I didn't think that he wasn't talented, not that I didn't enjoy his music, but it was hard for me to sit and really listen to his projects just through and through. After a while, they started to get a little bland or a little vanilla to me. This is his best work to date, wow. in my opinion. Wow. Like, uh, this album was very cohesive. It rides front to back. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not even a point in here where you want to skip anything. It's like you can just put the album on and let it play. Mm-hmm. Um, with it, uh, I thought that, you know, he really exercised or showed why he's one of the best in the game right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not a lot of artists have the ability to capture the essence of what he was uh, going for you know a lot of people try to execute these kind of albums Mm -hmm. but it's very hard to do but he actually got it across uh my only gripe with the album is i do kind of wish that uh we would have got a little bit more of the story throughout the track sometimes it's hard to tell when he's speaking from his own perspective and when he's Mm -hmm. speaking from his friend's perspective yeah um but you know all in all getting to that final track it all starts to make sense and i'm Mm -hmm. sure with more listens there'll be even more things that i catch yeah uh but yeah overall man it was great album uh rated out 92 okay wow I, I'm I'm taken back. I gotta be honest with you. I'm taking. Hey, it look, back. I told you I'm no hater. Bro. I know you're not. I know you're not. But we, you've called him Jay Cole. Yeah, you know, like yeah, I've we, called him Jay Cole. We've had many conversations yeah. about Jay Cole, and Jay Cole is one of those one of those artists who kind of like Wale. Either you, you extremely like him or you extremely don't like him. It's kind of fun not to like him, which I don't get it. But the Cole Hive is big. Yeah, you know, he went platinum. Like I said, last album without any features, and this album has zero features as well. Yeah, a couple vocal helps, but no no features. But um. Once I got the concept of the album, man, it was just like, it, it stuck out to me. This album was very good. I had to tip my hat to Cole for that. Cole's an amazing lyricist and has an amazing pen. If, if, if you don't know anything about J. Cole, you know he is, I don't want him to take any more breaks like this, you know, because <laughs> yeah. like, the game needs him, man. Yeah. You know, we need that balance. Um, after hearing the singles that didn't make the cut, I was expecting a different angle on the album, which for my own selfish reasons, I got a little bit let down because I wanted it to follow that 90s feel, yeah. which I did get some of that 90s feel in this album. But once again, once I got the concept of the album, it made me it made me feel better about those songs not being on the album. Yeah. Um, as a big Cole fan, man, this album feeds me. It feeds me. It definitely, if you're a Cole fan, this is what you've been waiting on. This is what you've been wanting to hear from hip hop. Um, you know, um, but I got to say, I had, I, wor- I worry whether he left a little bit on the table because I didn't know if he pulled the, the the non-Cole fan in. And I'm, it's, it's very therapeutic to hear that <laughs> it did pull you in. Because yeah. one person, you know, I always, you know, me and you talk music all the time, and I wondered, like, is Kevin really going to feel this? I know I'm going to like it because I'm a Cole fan. But I know at times when I listen to some Cole music, you're like, man, I just want some more upbeat stuff. But he got so personal, it was a little dreary at times, and it went from up to down. And one thing about the tr- transitions on a lot of these tracks, it would start off happy and end very sad. Yeah. And I thought that was very dope. And But it, once you got the concept of the album, it explains why. Um... So, you know, the people that's on the fence, I wondered if it pulled those people in and made those people Cole fans. That I, I can't say for sure. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm a I'm just a fan of whatever's good, and mm-hmm. I felt like this was a very good offering. But I could see where uh, an average listener may get a little bored with this album. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's so deep, so personal. It's not easy listening. It's nothing that you can you know, just casually go through and party to or anything like that. If, if that's what you're looking for, just something to throw and shuffle on your iPhone or whatever, yeah. then it may not be for you. But mm-hmm. if you really want to dig in, put it in the headphones or, you know, zone out, uh, I don't don't zone out in the whip while you're driving, but uh, yeah. <laughs> if you just kind of want right. to zone out right. to right. it, <laughs> uh, I definitely think that it, it's an album, if you've got the ear for it, that you'll be very, very pleased with. Absolutely, man. Clean up the house music. But it's one of those... It's kind of like watching a movie. Like right now, Star Wars is on TV, and whenever I see it, I got to finish it. Yeah. It's kind of like that. This album is like that. Once you start one song on it, you pretty much want to go through and just listen to the rest of the album. Yeah. Um, very easy listening as well. Definitely is a suggestion for rap album of the year. I don't know if for best album of the year, but rap, rap album, album of, the year, of the year, it probably definitely is the best rap album of the year. I can um, see that. You know, it's a discussion for that, but it's just such a heavy R&B year. Yeah. You know, it's going to be hard to top that. And we do have our um, end of the year. Uh, review coming up as well but i rated out as a 91 so okay. we definitely wow. mirrored that i'm just no man we've really been on some like uh some egon you know, stuff man we've been I, on the same wavelengths these last couple of weeks man. absolutely you know what though i i low-key was it was hard for me to to rate it that high because it was like <laughs> i thought it was an excellent album but i'm like yo am i just giving away these points no exactly these days like man everything everything's been so good so don't think that we're just giving away right. points 
Like, yeah. yo, the music these past couple of weeks has just been phenomenal. It's, like, we've, it, we've been blessed. It's been a good a good time for music this year, man. Yeah. It really has. And we some of the last albums we re, we've been reviewing have been very high, but they're warranted, man. There's been yeah. some good music. And Cole, you know, he did it, man. I just don't want him. And my little sister and her husband hit me up about this, and they were um, debating whether, you know, it, as far as Cole being gone, it's kind of like he does a disservice to the game when he's gone for as long <laughs> as he is. And I was like, I didn't want to agree with my, my brother-in-law, but I got to kind of agree with him. You know, shout out to Puda, by the way. Um, I got to agree with him, you know, on that. We need him, man. Yeah. You, we need the stuff like this for balance. Even if it's one of those things where, you know, we get a Kendrick album one year and then we get a Cole album the next year. So it's staggered. So we have something that we can relate to. Because all this mumble, heavy beat trap music rap is like, it but wears me out, man. Cole's one of those artists where he has to live a little. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Before he can put out the music. Because the music is so personal. Like, he can't just give you you know, hits after hit. Like, when he makes hits, to me, mm-hmm. that's his worst music. Yeah, you're right. Because you think about it, what's the one on the last, not the album before the last one, was a Nice Watch, the one with Jay-Z yeah. and all that stuff. It was like, it had no, it had no vision. There was, it yeah, was like, like, it was a good song, but it was like, he could rap. There was no feeling to it. There was no feeling to it. Damn, yeah. I might have killed myself on a future argument. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, it was a, a very good album. We'll, um, you know, what did you think? Yeah. Leave it in the comments, zero to 100, if you're grading the paper. Let us know what you think, man. Absolutely. You know? So, I'm Nate here. This is Kev. You know, two-thirds of the super group that is Games Music Life. As always, drink more water, people. Yes, like, comment, subscribe. Always All that, that good stuff. Yes. Peace. Peace.